I live in Glenor Grove and I've been here for three years now. I moved into the Lockyer Valley just over three years ago. A lot of people said, oh, when you're moving there, be careful because they always have lots of flooding. So I've been fortunate to find a house at the top of the rise and we don't really get flooded up here, but we can be prevented from getting out because the three main routes of access have now been closed over three times in the three years that I've been here. So I've had a lot of thought and, and I've made some lists of things that would be important to take with me, um, including the important things like medications and always having enough supplies in the cupboard to last a couple of days because the three times we have been flooded, it's been two or three days that we haven't been able to get out of the village. So yeah, it's important to have thoughts about what would you do in any kind of emergency situation. And I think when you have uh, disabilities, a disaster takes on a different meaning. You know, most people think disasters are fires, floods, you know, bushfires. For a disabled person, it can be a lot more simple than that. It could be having been out in the car all day and you get a flat tire and you just don't know what to do about it. And you could be delayed and, and not have all the right resources with you to, to manage that situation. So you do have to think about, certainly I think about my animals all the time. So they're top of my priority list. I have the two dogs and my plan would be to take them with me as, as far as possible or get them to somewhere safe if they couldn't be accommodated um, elsewhere. But the other animals, well, I don't think anyone would welcome ducks, geese, chickens and a rooster in the back of my car. So I have the plan, I have lots of food stored for them. We have the dam as well and I think I would be letting them out to fend for themselves. A lot of people struggle with do we lock them up and keep them safe or do we let them out and who knows. But at least if they're outside and they're not enclosed in the pen, they have a chance of escape. They can find their own way through nature, whereas if I'd penned them in and left them, I wouldn't be happy with that. So. I have thought about that and they're easily accessible to food as well. There's lots of food around their area that they can have access to if they're left out. I think I would advise people to talk to each other, talk to their family, talk to their friends. Some of our neighbours have been here a very long time and um, we know obviously the neighbours immediately next door and, and it's important as well to check on them and make sure that they've got their plans and you might be able to do something together um, and help them to make up their plan or their checklist. It's just important to have that communication with the people that are surrounding you um, and just check in from time to time and make sure that everything's okay. And in some kinds of disasters, I guess you do get a fair bit of warning and it's about helping each other to make appropriate plans. There's plenty of local community organisations that can help you. And of course, with the local council having the, the website and the disaster dashboard, that's a really good thing to look at it when you're not stressed or when you're not facing a disaster. So like, you know, at the weekend, if you're not doing anything else, just jump, jump online and have a look. Uh, there's lots of good suggestions for how to manage what you need to do in a disaster and if you practice it just to pre-plan and then you know that you've been through it because that that memory will kick in um, and you will remember those things that you've already thought about in the past so it's important not to leave it until the last minute.